Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. I got a cold. Uh, anyhow, we got this 03 Chevy. Uh, it's got the big 4.8 in it. it has got a ton of miles on it. Uh, it has a code for some fuel system lean problems and they've already shot the parts cannon at it, but nobody changed the fuel pump. Uh, it's got about 20 pounds of fuel pressure. Circuit's good, all that. Anyhow, we're not looking at that. It also has a knock sensor code in it. Uh, the guy's gonna take care of his own fuel pump, I guess, but wanted me to check out and take care of the knock sensor issue. Kind of a common problem on these. Uh, I do believe there's a service Bolton on it. Uh, I don't know if it went back to this year or not, but they used to have a little problem with the water getting under the intake and rotting the connectors off. And you're supposed to build this silicone dam to keep the water out and all this other business. Uh, anyhow, I wanted to show you some quick uh, easy ways to check knock sensors. Of course, we're going to be using a lab scope here. It's about the easiest way to check knock sensors. And to be honest with you, uh, you can check them using a regular, you know, uh, digital voltmeter on the AC scale. It's, you know, I've seen it before where it's not 100% definitive, so you got to be careful with it. But we're just going to take a scope. We're going to look at these knock sensors. I'm going to show you what they look like, show you how I test them. And uh, then I'm going to swap out the new ones because uh, I do have one bad one on this, but I can show you kind of, you know, bad versus good. And uh, we'll take it from there. I'm not going to show the process. I don't feel good today. And uh, frankly, I just don't have the time. But uh, I do want to show you, you know, what's up. So here's the code we get. We get that uh, PO327. I think the other code's like a 325 because there's two sensors. Don't hold me to that. Uh, fortunately, GM has made it easy to work on, so they put our sensor connector jumper harness right up here on the intake manifold. Uh, so that's helpful. Uh, so I do already have our scope hooked up, and I'll show you how to test these. So it's actually code 327 and 332 are going to be your low voltage code. So what it does basically, so your knock sensors, they're going to create their own electricity. They're a, uh, I guess what they consider a piezo crystal sensor. Uh, kind of like you know some DPF sensors and uh, stuff like that. Uh, so it's going to create its own electricity with with movement. Um, yeah, I'm not an expert on that, so you'd have to kind of look that up to learn a little bit more. Um, they do have a resistance spec on them. So one one test you can do on a knock sensor is a resistance check. Now we'll see. Uh, let's see, I'm going to have to switch my leads around here, um, but we can do an ohm check on them. Now these are supposed to be around 100,000 ohms, I think between 80 and 100,000 or 80 and 110,000 or something like that. So I'll swap leads around here. Let's see, so one of them is at 103,000. Now let me swap it with the other one. We're hooked right directly just to the sensor and then to ground, just the single wire sensor. And then the other one is 104,000. So uh, resistance wise, they seem to check out okay. Uh, so that proves it right there. You cannot just base this off resistance alone because I, I know I have a bad one. There's no question about that. So that's one check you can do on them. Uh, what the vehicle sets, the code setting criteria for this is it looks for a certain amount of noise to be on that signal when the vehicle started at a certain RPM and if it doesn't see it then you know we flag this code uh, that's kind of kind of it in a nutshell uh, so right now we're, we're hooked up we're AC coupled uh, of course being a snap-on scope you gotta turn the peak detect on or you're gonna get false positives uh, I've got a trigger set now I got um, our green trace is actually on what they would consider knock sensor 2 and our yellow trace is on what they consider knock sensor 1 and knock sensor 1 is the one that we're supposed to have an issue with. Uh, I got it like on a 10 volt scale. We got, you know, we got what, 200, you know, 20 milliseconds for division, 200 milliseconds across our screen. Don't mind the sniffles folks. So what we'll do in theory, you take it and if the engine detects noise or knock, it's going to display an AC sine wave here. Uh, and the amplitude and frequency will change with the intensity of the knock. Uh, so what we're going to do is use the old pry bar and the old hammer and I'm going to give her a little tap on the exhaust manifold and we should see a signal being generated. You don't have to have the key on or anything for this. We get down here on the manifold and we're going to give her a little tap. So we see that signal number two is working. 
the harder you hit, you know, the higher the amplitude of the signal goes. But don't hit too hard, you don't want to break the old girl. So now I'm going to hit towards the back of the engine and the rear manifold. Let's see, I don't want to break the spark plug off either. See, we got a pretty good signal there being produced. Oh, look at that little finer detail here. We'll change our time basis. Got 50 milliseconds across the screen here. You should see that with a little finer detail now. But we can see our other knock signal down here, our knock sensor one, is not working. We know a couple things though. We know it's hooked up, we know it has good resistance, it's just kaput. Um, you can look at this in a on a DVOM. Of course, it's just going to average the voltage, so it may be very low voltage. You know, like a tenth of a volt or something. Let's see, we'll go AC volts. We'll have to switch our leads around here because our lead number one is the one that doesn't work. So we'll go on the one that does work. So this is going to be sensor number two. We'll give her a little tap. We'll see what the voltage is. So yeah, well we got about almost a tenth of a volt. Now we'll hop back on the dead one here just for curiosity's sake to see what it uh, what kind of voltage it does produce, if any. Yeah, a little bit there, but if you're comparing them to each other, it's clearly obvious that that one is spanked. Anyhow, I hope we're all getting something out of this. I hate working when I'm sick. Uh, the other thing we can do too, uh, we can start it up, see what kind of noise is on the known good one versus the crappy one. We'll probably have to go on a lower voltage scale to get any kind of details. So we'll, we'll drop her down to two volts here. See what she says. Uh, and keep bear in mind too that some oxygen, yeah, some oxygen sensors, I don't even know what I'm working on here. Some NOx sensors, the signals will work on a bias voltage. So let's say we had this plugged in and we're back probing it, it wouldn't be uncommon to see it like you know at a two and a half volt bias um, and then you know pull down when it's plugged in and you will use that for circuit checks, which you know isn't the case on this one. There is no bias voltage on this. Um, it's like 150 millivolts or something floating on that line. But anyhow, let me uh, start it up, kind of see what we have here. See if it'll start. So there we can see the difference. Now the ECM looks for a certain amount of noise. You know, I don't know what it's looking for as far as how much, uh, but it has a set parameter that it looks for. And when it doesn't see anything, you know, we get our low voltage code and Bob's your uncle. So that's that, folks. If you're working on one of these old Chevrolets, make sure you get the wiring harness for them. They do have these little rubber plugs that go down in. Of course, you got your single wire connector. Here's what the knock sensors look like. This one's from Serbia. And these are from Mexico. So that's how you know it's genuine Chevrolet. Apple Pie Baseball America, right there, folks. Everybody's driving domestics. They think I hate Chevrolets. Well, start making in the USA, baby. Like Honda. But anyhow, so there's knock sensors. They are pretty sensitive to torque specs and sealant and debris. So, lots of bulletins on them. Make sure you don't over tighten them and all that hoopla. But we got to pull the intake manifold, like I said. I'd love to show that, but. My kind of a time crunch going to do a little camping this weekend, so I got to get out of here on time today. So I'm told by the boss, lady. So I'll get them in. We'll recheck the specs uh, once we get it together and uh, take her from there. All right, well, there you go, fellas. The uh, intake is off. It was a sludge pit. Uh, so I cleaned it up, you know, use a vacuum cleaner and uh, my super scraper. Uh, at any rate, the front hole, sensor numero uno, was a rusty turd, uh, and you can see that it was drowned in water at some point. It was clean this time. Of course, there's about a half inch of rust sitting down the bottom of the hole. Um, 
but that's had an aux sensor, that's an aux sensor connector, and this is why you typically have to replace them. Now this was the rear one, and you can see the difference. Uh, so anyhow, it's all cleaned out, new ones are installed, torque to factory spec, of course, and the new harness put on. Now sometimes I'll take and I'll just run a bead of silicone around these rubber plugs. They fit quite nicely, GM did a good job on those, uh, so they do fit pretty snug. Silicone them in, follow the service bulletin, you know, whatever. Truck's 14 years old. Um, it made it this far in life, so I figured it ain't got another 14 years left in it, or four for that matter. So, up to you. Moments later, it is back together. So we're gonna reattach our ground. <clears throat> we'll go back on this little guy here. Up to our jumper harness. We'll take and get plugged into it. Maybe. Maybe again. Come on, little guy. Figure out what in the thunder I'm doing here. Yeah, good enough. Let's see. Uh, summertime cold suck. Just FYI, I haven't had a cold in probably five years. And here we are. Say the banshee. All right, we're back there. Let me get the old pry bar. <coughs> Give her the old tap. Guess we're gonna have to beat on this side. Technically, they should both work. I hope. Whoa! We're gonna have to change our voltage scale, fella. Well, we're still on, what were, we, what were we on two volts for? Oh, because we were looking at it running. Big dummy. All right, now let's have a look. So the amplitude of one of them should be a smidge lower just because, you know, we're beating on the front of the engine versus the back, but very light taps. Some very mild taps. Well, there she is. After giving her the hokey pokey, what we can do, proof of concept, we'll go back to our digital multimeter. Volts AC on two volt scale. Let's see if this is any different with the new ones. different there folks of course that's just average in the voltage now we can go back go back on our scope here we'll go ahead and put it on our two volt scale we'll start it up and we'll see what kind of noise they have just at an idle you'd be willing to start this there young lady no it's yes sir So, Miss Hannah's gonna start it. Uh, I am. Give her, uh, give her a couple of wah. So there, that's that. That's what they look like at an idle when they work. All right, shut off there, young lady. So, minus the glare, I guess that's about as good of a job as we can do. We're done, we verified our repair. We also verified it before we repaired it, which I guess is what you have to do. Of course on these, I've never seen anything other than just a knock sensor. So if you're in the market to take a wild guess, you'll probably get it right. But as you guys know, we don't guess, we test. That way there, I don't get burned guy comes back swinging fighting like a tiger yeah this guy this guy might not be but you never know so there you have it folks that is some basic drop my lead uh knock sensor testing on your chevy now they're all pretty much the same now chevy does use two different style knock sensors on these but i think that more has to do with how the ecm interprets the data um 
Other than that, that's it. Pretty much, uh, pretty pretty easy, pretty simple testing. Don't tighten the dog snot out of them. You know, they're supposed to be 15 foot pounds or something. Just use your noodle. Don't crush them down. And uh, same thing with the intake and stuff. You know, torque to spec, whatnot. So I'm gonna keep moving. And it'll take some more Elka Seltzer, cold and sinus stuff, so I can breathe. I can't breathe out my nose. We got the sniffles. So anyhow. Uh, that's it. I'm gonna keep on trucking. Got a bazillion things to do. No time to do it. Miss Hannah's gonna take care of our tools. And uh, while she's doing that, why don't you guys click that subscribe button if you haven't. Take them, young lady. Nice. And uh, you know, consider subscribing if you haven't. If you want to stay up to date with the videos, we're all each and every week. And uh, find us on Patreon and our socials and all that business. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.